Hey everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome to the one month impression on the Steam Deck. Um, those of you that saw my video, <clears throat> my previous video, I guess it will be now, uh, talking about the verified game status and that sort of thing, I, I guess that's sort of the biggest issue for me with the Steam Deck now is around Steam having these games that are verified that aren't running properly. You know, like Payday 2, for example, um, whatever version of Proton that I tried to run it on, struggling to get above sub, um, sorry, above 20-ish FPS. And <clears throat> that didn't change based on whatever I set, whatever settings I set Payday 2 to. So yeah, bit of a bit of a pain and something that, like I say, the Valve can work on, but we'll talk about, I wouldn't really want to primarily talk about my experience with the Steam Deck. Some issues that I've had, which uh, may be easily solvable, although others that are a bit annoying, but there you go. So, okay, so I guess the first thing is, overall I'm really happy with the Steam Deck. I think it either met or exceeded my expectations in general, in terms of what I thought it might be and what it might be able to do. Although, then again, you know, I went in with what I would deem to be fairly reasonable expectations that perhaps a lot of people didn't have. You know, for example, it running 30, uh, 720p or 800p um, at 30 FPS, for example. You know, that's what I expected to get out of it. So one of the issues that I had, which... Um, I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to... Oh, no, there is actually something I want to talk about first, which I am actually mentioned to talk about before, but didn't get around to it. So this is my um, internal storage drive, sorry for the glare, um, but you can see there I've got 161.3 gigabytes free out of my 226. Now, a lot of this down there is other seems to be like shader cache and that sort of stuff within um, the my Steam folder and also the compact data. So if you, the way I look at it is if you had the 64 gigabyte version, I would have run out of space on the games that I have installed and the residual files that are left over. Now, yes, I have installed applications on the desktop. So I've installed the emulators like um, the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 2 one, Switch, Dolphin, uh, CMU, but all the rest of the stuff I've got rid of now. So I did have Epic Games Store on there with Hand of Fate 2 installed. I used to have Elden Ring on the on the actual deck as well. But at some point, I I am still going to want to try dual booting. So I didn't want to. So I want to make sure I've got the most amount of space free on the device itself. But what it says to me is, if you want to be tinkering with this device, you better have had the higher than 64 gigabyte version or have plans to upgrade your SSD because that could eventually become a bit more of an issue, especially as more versions of Proton are added. That may only be a gigabyte at a time, or in this case, half a gig, but you are going to run into a situation potentially where um, you're going to run out of space on 64 gigabyte, and even the 256 is not going to be as comfortable as you would maybe like. And with there's no easy way of being able to reduce that. There probably is some sort of uh, software package that I'm not aware of, uh, in Linux that you can, that looks at this. I think I downloaded um, the file file light or something where it like shows you where your where your data is um, based on like um, circular graph, I can't remember what they're called now, but and that's really where I got the information from regarding where the where the where the data was going and that's why I moved Elden Ring off the internal drive really, sort of preemptively just so I get used to it being on the SD card <laughs> to be honest. Um, so yeah for sure, you know, 64 gigabyte version actually is going to be a bit, bit of a bigger issue, if you, especially if you wanted to do emulation and that sort of thing, um, because you'll need to have, as far as I'm aware, you'll need to have the software installed to the to the main drive, and then you can obviously can have your games installed on your SD, which is fine. Um, but it is worth noticing, and something that I don't necessarily think that people have picked up as of yet, not that I watch many other people's Steam Deck videos, hardly at all, but just worth noting so I did also have a comment from Nif Bricks, which was around trying MU Deck, which I have tried, and it has it balked my um, Yuzu installation. Uh, so I'm not really sure what's going on with that. It does seem to work in terms of making uh, collections correct. The instructions could be a bit better in terms of where you put your keys and that sort of thing. Um, but it seems to be pointing particularly. Because I've only really tried it with Yuzu and uh, Ryujinx, if 
that's how it's pronounced. Um, <clears throat> it seems to point them to the wrong location and they don't want to boot properly now. So I've either I've done something wrong or the program is pointing somewhere else wrong. But that's just worth noting that, that you might get a few issues with that. Uh, even though I did try to follow a tutorial. So yeah, just be aware. And then there's also the other issue where my Steam Deck wasn't allowing me to open app images in the desktop mode. So I ended up having to go into the permissions and setting it so that it asks me to, it asks for permission to execute the file. And now it does let me do it. So I'm not sure, I didn't don't believe that I made that made change, made those changes to that. But it's worth noting that that was a real big headache. That <laughs> took me about um, a couple hours of Googling before I found something. And then that didn't seem like it would be a fix, but it is. So very strange. In fact, I'll see if I can, I think I'll show you a new deck. But yeah, I have tried it. I've not had a great success with it. I've not installed any of the other emulators, unfortunately, yet, which I do want to do. I still have plans to do, um, but sort of been running out of time, unfortunately. Um, I did try YouTube playback. So I tried playing back some of my own videos on there through YouTube, through um, Firefox. It worked perfectly fine, actually. Really good. Um, so what I want. So that's the SD card. I think it's in, going to be in my folders. But this might just be worth showing you because I imagine I'm probably not the only person that will have these issues. Yeah, so there it is, app image. So if I click on it now, it should work because I've changed the, oh, whoops. There, so it comes with this. So before it wasn't coming up with this, it was saying, which is, uh, let me see if it will focus. Whoop. What do you want to do with this file, basically? Execute or cancel? So before it was just telling me that it couldn't um, execute the file in this in this file system or something like that, which is really bizarre. Um, I didn't actually close Steam, so hopefully this does work. But yeah, anyway, this is Deck just to show you that I have actually installed it. But yeah, it seems to point to the wrong locations for various, well, for the, the uh, Switch ones. So there are, of course, extra instructions to install semu that I haven't done yet, although I do have it downloaded. Uh, but that's probably just worth noting. But yeah, it doesn't seem like it goes to the right file format. I'm not, and to be fair, I'd spent about an hour trying to do it and then I thought, you know what, I'll leave it for another day and have another go at it, but I've not had a chance to get back to it yet. So yeah, just thought I would, in terms of my tinkering, still a lot of work to do. Um, I've still got to do all the setup for the PS3 emulator as well but it is on the to-do list. So, yeah, just thought I would raise that as some potential issues that might that may come up, but I class this under sort of more, the more sort of advanced, in inverted commas, because it's not that advanced, but advanced tinkering that you may or may not want to do on a Steam Deck. So you can take it or leave it in that regard. Um, the next one I've got is um, discussion on Steam input and customizable control schemes, trackpads, details on these kind of things. Uh, very thin on the ground, it's from OJ. Uh, looking forward to your impressions as you've covered a lot of information already in your videos. So, oh gosh, controller schemes. <laughs> there, so that's not straightforward by any stretch. Uh, there was a good update recently where they're adding the gaming mode um, keyboard to the desktop I believe which is a which is great because the the desktop one was sort of lifted and shifted from big picture you know the one where you've got the dual trackpads it's not not as nice not as intuitive to use um, and stuff on the desktop doesn't isn't always com very compatible with it so that's a good improvement that's been made in terms of control schemes um, luckily for a lot of games there are community ones uh, one of the ones I mentioned that was a bit more difficult was Oblivion, although this seems to be a bit better now. But in terms of making changes and stuff, I guess, what can I show you? So I made changes to the standard Oblivion one because the issue that we, the issue that I found with, with this one was particularly, a lot of stuff's really good by the way, um, a lot of it makes sense, so that's not a problem. 
But if you go into Edit Layout, I'm trying to get it so you can see, it's a bit awkward though. Um, and then go into Joysticks. So right joystick is joystick mouse, which is fine because you want to look around on your right joystick. The issue that I had was on the left joystick mouse. So I've set it now so it's WASD. Um, and click is control. I'm not sure that's it. Oh, no, that's the right way. Yeah. But what it had before is it had an outer ring command. So that means anything where you sort of go past a certain point, it make it turn, you know, it adds a modifier or something else like that. But the issue that I was finding was it was set as a, oh, I can't remember which one it was now. Anyway, the one that takes in the directional pad. Um, but then it was modifying it with shift. So effectively, so you run in, in oblivion. And running is like the, the what I would deem to be like the normal travel speed. Uh, otherwise, you're just walking everywhere. But part of the issue was that when I was doing... When I was walking every when I was walking everywhere, I had to hold this joystick. So not like not all the way. So all the way wasn't doing that. All the way was walking, and a small amount was walking. But when you get it just about there, that's when it was doing the shift modifier, not when you were holding it all the way forward. Which to me would make a lot more sense and actually work. But the problem is that control scheme doesn't doesn't work properly. So at least not on the not on my experience on the Steam Deck. Anyway, everything else is fine though. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> uh, all the other buttons and everything else make sense, it's where you expect it to be. Um, this is used as your favourites, you've also got your attacks and your spells up here, and then uh, normal buttons, Y for jumping, A for picking up stuff, X gets your weapon out, come on, B does. Oh yeah, brings up menu. You know, so all that stuff's fine. But it was just the, this, this control made it almost tedious to play, to play with. So, unfortunately, there's no easy way around it. What you can do is, obviously, the first thing you can do is find a community layout that's been heavily upvoted. So I think this one's actually pretty high, 195 likes, lots of hours for a PlayStation 4 controller, but, you know, same sort of thing. Um, yeah, and then find one that suits as a basis and then go in and if something doesn't work properly, particularly if it doesn't have native controller support, then that's sort of what you have to go in and do, um, unfortunately. So that one is, um, I guess that's like the most common thing you'll be messing around with on the Steam Deck. But I don't really have too much else to say on that because there are a huge amount of options. But it just it's just the amount, how much time do you want to spend um, messing around with the, all the available settings that are, that are there. You can fine tune it as much as you would want to. The one on trackpads is interesting so i have still found being able to do a right click with the trackpad or was it be a left click left click with the tra uh, trackpad on the right trackpad quite difficult to get the right amount of pressure and the reason for that is because on the settings <clears throat> for the trackpad where is the trackpad settings i think it might be on edit layout yeah so trackpads so you've got a click and you've got a touch. <laughs> now the problem is, on the um, on the desktop, I think both of these are set to left click on the right trackpad. So you end up dragging stuff where you don't mean to, and you make a click sometimes, it doesn't register. So that can be pretty annoying. So at the minute, the click is set to um, jump. I don't know why. I think I did that by accident. But it's not, it doesn't feel consistent. So this is like a, this feels to me like a tap, <laughs> but that's a click. And the sensitivity is sometimes, because I could be moving like this and then occasionally hit a jump. Not doing it now, obviously, but the point is, it's not as consistent as I would like the trackpads. Um, and that sort of feeds into a lot of the different games you can play as well. RTS games are quite laborious sometimes because you're having to do so much movement and it's not quite precise enough. Now whether that is something that can be overcome with time and practice, I imagine so. It's trying to learn a new way of working, that's for certain. And there might be games that you deem to be really worthwhile doing so. So one thing one of the games I've got in my library is... where is it? No, oh, did I uninstall it? 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, they're billions. So that needs mouse control. The trackpads do work, but it's very difficult to switch between highlighting your troops, moving them around, having to do lots of fast clicks and commands in various locations. These trackpads are not the greatest for that. I feel as though pure RTS games, like they are billions, like Age of Empires, are going to be a lot more of a struggle as compared to maybe Total War, where you just have to worry about controlling your troops. And obviously the campaign map is take as long as you want really we won't lose too much advantage by doing that slowly so yeah pure rts games are have been a challenge for me now that might be something that someone who's already got a steam deck say oh no it's easy i can do that no problem but maybe that comes down to level of skill i don't know but it feels it doesn't feel terribly user friendly and um that's one of the things i've not had too much success with and in terms of changing sensitivity then overshooting a lot of stuff because a lot of things require quite precise uh, clicks as well. And especially when, as I was saying, the clicks don't always seem to register properly. Um, it can become quite frustrating. So that's something that I will definitely be looking to do more because I do really enjoy RTS games. I think it will probably be fine. I've been able to play fine on um, Rome t uh, Total War Medieval 2. But with it still being a little bit laborious, I guess. The good thing about RTS games is they'll probably they'll translate really well to using it on a monitor and getting yourself a mouse and keyboard, playing it that way. So that is the that's the ultimate workaround. I know it's not a brilliant one, but hopefully that covers a lot of what you're after, OJ. Because um, you know that's my general feelings on the control control schemes. It it yeah. It can either be incredibly good or it can be incredibly tedious. It doesn't seem to be too much in the middle. Oblivion's one of those ones I would say is in the middle though. Um, and then Corey's also asked me what my opinion, what what do I foresee Valve updating changing and what do you think will be updated if there is, I guess, in a Steam Deck V2. Okay, now that's a interesting one. I'll save that for the end though because I think that's probably like a, a future section. So. Overall with the Steam Deck, I've actually been really impressed with it. I've been a lot more impressed with the Linux desktop experience, actually. It's one of the, probably one of the best parts of the Steam Deck. Um, as I say, it certainly either exceeded, met or exceeded my expectations. Um, a lot of games run that maybe I thought may struggle um, and actually are playable. Some games, like Oblivion, still have controller issues that have had controller issues on um, on Steam anyway. This isn't a magic bullet that fixes that fixes everything. And personally, I don't mind doing the tinkering. I mean, the amount of videos that I've put out tinkering on different video games and getting them, you know, trying different versions of Proton or looking on Proton DB for a way to to fix certain games. It's something that I actually enjoy. So I don't find that as big of a deal as someone who is maybe coming from like a a gaming windows gaming laptop where everything works and thinking oh, i'll just get a steam deck and then being and being exposed to linux and such and proton for the first time sort of reminds me a little bit when i built a steam os pc a long time ago um we're a lot more cooked now than we were then we're a bit raw going in raw on that one unfortunately so yeah i think it's one of those where realistically there are going to be certain games that are not terribly suitable to play on the steam deck and then there'll be other games that are brilliant to play on Steam Deck, like a game that I bought recently because I heard that it's been taken off Steam. I think that's the reason. That is the reason I got it. Is where is it? Uh, Ninja Blade, one of uh, From Software's games from 2010. And I played that for an hour yesterday, and um, it's really good actually. I thoroughly, I thoroughly enjoyed it. But it's got native controller support. It's quite. It's a bit of an older game, a bit sort of Devil May Cry type style, so like hack and slash. Um, and it runs perfectly well, and it's it's like it's a lot of fun. I did have to enable um, Proton, Glorious Egg World Proton, because there's an issue with one of the cutscenes, or a couple of the cutscenes, if if you didn't run the compatibility. But it runs like incredibly, it, and as you would expect it to, because it's an older game with controller support. And if it's those sort of games you want to play, then this is going to be brilliant. You know, the trackpads and all the extra controller support allows you to then do that next step of yes you can play like you can play Crusader Kings 2 but you may have to tweak stuff a little bit or Oblivion or whatever so that for me as I say 
it's not so much a problem if there's a game I really want to play that I'm more than happy to do that. Obviously when I've been doing the testing videos I'm not going to spend an hour setting up a controller scheme for a game that I'm going to play for 20 or 30 minutes to see uh, if everything actually works correctly. So that's just my one of my thoughts on that one. Um, I haven't had too much chance with to check out battery life but if I was going away anywhere, I would take my power bank with me anyway. Um, I take it for my, <laughs> I take it for my phone and, and such, regardless. So I don't really see, I don't really see that being too much of a, um, of an issue. Um, I've got a small bag that I like to take take away with me, and the Steam Deck just fits in there. It's like it was made perfectly for it. I think it's pretty much bang on the right size. Um, I've ordered a a very thin power bank to see if there's any. Uh, well, I don't want to spoil things if we make a video on it, but um, to see if there's a way of maybe in integrating that into the Steam Deck and being able to, you know, maybe get an extra couple hours of battery life out of it, depending on what you're playing. Um, that's something you definitely could do. And yeah, I think stuff like having uh, the official dock coming out as well will make things a lot easier. Something that's actually certified to work with the Steam Deck. Uh, but the one I've made, I've been pretty happy with. You know, a few few niggles here and there, but nothing nothing crazy um, and it'd be interesting to see how how Windows works on there so I mean overall I think I've got to give the Steam Deck I don't know, I've got to give the Steam Deck a, probably like a 9 9.5 out of 10 um, I'd probably give Valve about a 7 in reality they've made a great bit of hardware but unless they back it up by employing more people in it and empowering more people in the company to you know make sure that this is working as it ne as it needs to for mainstream appeal, then it will miss a beat. I don't want to harp on about that too much, though. And I think for me, it's been been incredible. Although it does answer the same, or it does come back to the same question that I've had. You know, people have have said to me in my real life, "Well, you've got a gaming computer. Why would you why would you not play on your gaming computer that's got a 3080 in compared to your Steam Deck?" And it's a really good question. And at home, I probably wouldn't play on the Steam Deck unless I was not in my office, unless I was in bed, you know, on the sofa, uh, which I guess is what it's for. I said, you know, my re my reply to that has been, well, I'd use it whenever I would use a gaming laptop, which in my life is not actually te that, that terribly often. Um, you know, I'm going away very soon for a good few weeks, and this is something that I think will come in, you know, we'll get, a, we'll see a lot of use then when I don't have my main computer with me. So different people's use cases will, the, will equal this device having different values. But the fact of the matter is, you can pretty much use it for, for everything. Um, I would not be adverse to doing a few weeks just using the Steam Deck as my main computer, uh, where I try and do everything on it. That wouldn't be a problem. Probably have to wait till I get back now, if I'm going away. But it's certainly a possibility because I've seen what it can do and I know that it's possible, especially the games I want to play, like me personally, rather than just testing out the games in my library. I can probably make nearly nearly all of them work on here. Like no real problem, or if there is, I'm happy to do the workaround. Um, so yeah, all really positive. I don't have too much bad to say, but not but. We are, I will finish though. I appreciate it's been quite a long video, so thank you to anyone who's still with me. But what are my opinions on updating updates in the future, and what can be done for a V2 Steam Deck? Um, <clears throat> so, one of the things I would like to see, and I, I'm taking this from, from Linus, so thanks Linus for that, but I'd also like to see a charging port on the bottom, potentially. I think that would have been pretty handy, so not just on the top, but also on the bottom as well. Um, I think that would make the most sense to have those two options there. Uh, I'd also like for the um, Type-C to be non-soldered, you know, um, semi-removable I guess where it's, where it's, like, where it's a, a module like the thumbsticks because that's the sort with only having one as well that's the sort of thing that hardware wise that could probably do the most damage to you not being able to use your Steam Deck properly um, that, that's probably like the big outer hardware thing they could improve I think the shape design um, size and weight of the Steam Deck is pretty much about perfect Can, you know all things considered could they squeeze a slightly bigger battery in there I think they probably could um, and that might be something that they look to do next time, whether it's that much bigger, I don't know, I think it's like five and a half 
thousand milliamp hour battery uh, milli milliamp hours at the minute. Maybe they can get a seven thousand milliamp hour battery in there instead. Some slightly bigger cells, um, but that would probably be about it, wouldn't it? So that would be like what fifty. 50 milliamp hours, I think, something like that. Anyway, um, so you know that would increase your, that would give you an, a 20%-ish improvement on battery life, which wouldn't be too bad. Um, I wouldn't like to see Steam release anything too soon in terms of a, a V2. I think it should it should be a few years out. I think um, it should be looking towards if they're going to stick with AMD, well, they might go Intel now because Intel have got their own uh, graphics lineup, but. Something around the same generation as RDNA 3, maybe late RDNA 3, RDNA 4, potentially. Um, that's the type of SOC. So they actually managed to get the performance improvements for while still maintaining um, a low uh, TDP on the chip. Because I think releasing anything that's still RDNA 2 now wouldn't give you the required power bump that you would need. And I would like to see... I know games are always evolving, but I would like to see Steam maybe aim for a, I don't know, 90% of the library, 800p, if they're going to stick with 800p, uh, which I'm fine with, by the way, um, at 60fps. A lot of people have mentioned around wanting OLED screens on it. I'm not too fussed about that. That doesn't not something that particularly bothers me. I'm happy with the screen as is. It's as I would expect. Uh, maybe anti-glare as a standard might be, <laughs> might be nice, but... I, yeah, I, I can't really complain about that one too much. I'm not really sure what else I think can be improved too much. That's that's not then they've not already done a, a good enough job of already. There's nothing revolutionary. I'm happy with how the controls are laid out. Um, happy with the speakers. Happy with the buttons. I'm not happy with the with the trackpads fully, but I can't give a reason or. Um, any sort of succinct conclusion on how that can be made better. I really like the desktop environment. I think that works pretty well. I think there are some UI changes that could and performance that could be improved on for sure, particularly in like switching in and out of desktop mode, um, particularly with like the screen sometimes defaulting to the wrong um, orientation so maybe they do maybe they do build a bespoke screen for the next steam deck and then maybe that's oled i don't know um you know that might be a good one i'm not sure if oled use less power compared to whatever the lcd i guess that's in this uh, if so then yeah i'm all for oled <laughs> let's do that instead let's try and let's try and save power as and when we can um but yeah overall i think it's more Anything from the Steam Deck V2 has got to be evolution rather than revolution. Um, this is a revolution in the handheld gaming market, for sure. And, you know, place people like the One X1 player and Iron Eo have real, genuine competition if Steam could make enough units of this. Um, and if Steam do decide to not fully support a Windows install, but uh, carry on the trend in which they're going because I'm all for people being able to do exactly what they want with their hardware, and we should, I believe, champion that as much as possible. So Steam doing more of the same, redoubling efforts on this verification stuff would be really good. Uh, perhaps the next one having a slightly bigger battery um, and focusing on, like I say, at a minimum, RDNA 3, probably more the RDNA 4 generation, depending on sort of how power, power efficiency and performance goes. And then, you know, maybe they could even bump it up to a 900p, 900p screen, I guess, or something along those lines, um, if the power allows. So, that's my thoughts. Right, well, this has been an extremely long video, so I do apologise. Thank you very much for watching, though. I hope you've enjoyed this series on the Steam Deck. I've enjoyed making them. I've been sort of really happy to be one of the first people to get it and get my hands on it and start tinkering around and testing games. And it's been really nice to see that you guys have been... Uh, enjoying watching along with me as well so yeah just want to thank you all for for tuning in and sending comments likes the rest of it it's been yeah greatly appreciated and yeah can't wait for you guys to get your hands on your own and play around for yourself and let me know what i did wrong <laughs> all right everybody thanks for watching i'll see you all very soon bye for now